but they shouldn't have been getting away with this and luckily I caught on to it and I just don't want it to happen to you so I'm just going to briefly explain it in this video today. He said that he's going to have to put a dispute in if I don't issue him a refund and I said that he should go ahead and do that because I truly believe that if eBay was to look into this case, they would be able to see what I can see. All right, Monday morning. Geez, they come around quick. We had a really strong weekend of sales though, and as, I guess as we should, it's anticipated. You know, our, our sales projection goals for this month are a, a whole lot more higher because we're in November. Makes sense, right? Pre-Christmas, a lot of people purchasing, and 35 sales is about 10 sales over our average normal weekend, which as a percentage is really quite a big jump. So I'm gonna take you through 10 of the best sold sales items after I sit down with my sales meeting with Courtney. Uh, she's starting in 30 minutes and I've just got to go to Australia Post and get some envelopes. Uh, we're short on envelopes and I also need to go to Bunnings. I need to pick up some boxes for Courtney uh, to do the post because we've got quite a number of boxes, which is always frustrating because it takes a little bit longer to package up the boxes versus just putting things in a satchel or an envelope. Uh, we got scammed as well over the weekend. Well, I shouldn't say scammed. We just had someone that was trying to pull a cheeky on us, trying to trying to get a refund when they shouldn't have got a refund. I'll explain a little bit more about it, but it's a really good case study in this video today for anyone that might just be starting out. If you're a little bit in fear of people out there trying to scam you of money, this will be a good example of one of the scenarios that these guys are trying to pull on people. But I've been playing this eBay game now for a little bit and uh, I don't fall for things like that. So I was able to get myself out of it and get him running away pretty quickly. But I'm gonna break it all down for you in this video as well. So we'll do some thrifting uh, as well this afternoon. Once Courtney's sort of comfortable and aware of what's going on and knocking the post over for me. Uh, she's got all the flea market items that I picked up yesterday in yesterday's video. And uh, I'm gonna go and top up a few more items so she can list her 30 listings for the day. So, should be a fun video. I'm, I've, I've got a lot planned for this one. Stick around. All right, before we get into the what's sold, I just wanted to go through some sales numbers that we've just gone through with Courtney uh, over a coffee. And I'm referring to this little board that we've got up here, uh, which is all of our sales numbers for the month of November. We're trying to get to uh, $13,000 in revenue. So $433 a day. Uh, is the goal and we're averaging right now today $416 we're on 5205 um, so we're doing really well because we've got the Black Friday sale coming up and that's happening on the 27th uh, no 24th 5th 26th and 27th uh, we've got a four-day sale running um, we should be able to go well ahead of that based on the way that we're tracking so I highly recommend that you guys get this sort of an accountability board um, focusing on listings and quantity of stock needed down here in the bottom right corner as well is really good for Courtney when she comes in. Um, she gets a good update of knowing exactly where we're at. So she's got a full day of listings ahead today and I've got to go out and find 84 listings for Courtney to be able to list up throughout the week. That's kind of how we split up what we do. Um, so 13,000, if we're able to do 13,200 as a bit of a stretch target, that would be the all time biggest revenue in three and a half years of selling on eBay. So. Hopefully with this Black Friday sale that we've got coming up, if we can get close, hopefully the sale will be able to knock us into new territory and give us a huge month. So huge uh, set of uh, numbers there. I think our worst sale is about $236. So this is definitely the biggest month to be selling on eBay. Um, everything that you can see on the table here is what we've done this weekend. So 34 sales plus a 35th sale, which is the first one that I wanna to touch on here. This one came through Instagram. Uh, Chris, one of the, um, one of, not only the subscribers of the channel, but he's also a channel member. Uh, if you got a, guys don't know, we do, a, oh bless you, we do a, um, a channel membership and uh, that's $4.99 a month and we, we put out extra content. So if you want to be a channel member, it's pretty easy to join on the homepage. Um, but this one right here is what Chris is getting. We bought this at the flea market for $10 just yesterday and he hit me up on Instagram and he said, do you mind if I, I grab it off you? And we've done it for $30 free postage. Uh, so no eBay fees with that. I don't know if it works. He knows that. He's got some cords, so he's going to give it a bit of a test run. Um, so don't be afraid to buy these sorts of things, not because you can sell it on Instagram to viewers of your YouTube channel, but more for the fact that people are happy to buy it um, without awareness of whether or not it works. Because often than not, they're smarter than you are and they can get these things back up and running. Um, so Chris will go ahead and do that. Hopefully it's just a really good working device and he's got it for a steal at $30. 
Um, which one do we want to do? Um, Funkos? The Funkos, yep. So the Funkos is actually, I'm really pleased with the Funko Pops. These ones here are the Batman Funkos. This is a set of four. We got a $50 sale price uh, for these Funkos, which we had listed up as a bundle, which is a great way of doing it. But we've also sold these individually as well. Um, so Harley, Venomized, Captain America. These are actually some good Funkos. We've got an 80-year Marvel uh, Wolverine as well. Um, so those, what, four Funko Pop sales <clears throat> have come through because I've dropped the prices on all of these Funko Pop boxes. So every single one has been a heavily reduced price and we're actually starting to see more sales in the Funko Pop category come through. I'm not buying any more Funkos. When these boxes are empty, that will be the end. And I swear, it'll be the end of Funko Pops because I do think the market is really dying off uh, and we just don't want to be doing it anymore. So to see this come through for $50, you know, the, the buyer, if they're into this sort of thing, has got it at a steal because that works out to about $12 each and they retail for about 20 so, you know, you could look at it like there's 80 to to $100 worth of value and he's buying it on eBay for 50 because I just want to get out of the uh, category. Um, so, in my mind, even though it was a, a small sale at $50, it was still a good sale because it means we don't have it uh, in, the, in the garage anymore. Um, we spoke around this as well. Uh, I've spoken about this a lot lately because we're just starting to make a lot more listings like this. This is a bunch of Xbox 360 games that aren't worth a whole heap of money. Um, so we had a total of 13, I think it's actually 14 games, uh, and we sold it for $70. So 70 bucks, basically a $5 purchase price per game. So somebody's got a very good deal here. Um, but if we tried to list all of them up, that'd be worth about $10 a game. Um, so you could argue that you could sell them for $140 versus $70. But after fees and individual shipping, there's not going to be that much of an incremental gain in profit. However, we're going to get all of them done and out of the house and we bought it in a big bulk haul where we're able to sell other games for a much higher price. And these are just kind of the clean out of the old games that aren't worth as much. So we've done that a lot lately and it's worked. $70, I'm happy to say it because that'll go into a box and it'll probably ship off for about, I don't know, 10 to $15, do you reckon? Yeah. Um, so that was good to see as well. We had multiple... Multiple video game bundles sell recently. Good time of year as well, right? It with, is, yeah. With, with Christmas. Um, this one was an interesting one. Still in the video game category. This sold for $50 as well, but it's not a video game. This is, I don't know, some weird game guide with a bunch of cards. So it's a full set of cards and there's some tokens in there that literally haven't been used yet. So it's The Witcher Wild Hunt. Got it in a bulk buy, thought, and it's an expansion pack, $50 on it. I thought that was a fantastic sale price, exactly what the comps were saying um, on eBay. So we just matched what the comps were saying, and then this is sold in the space of, I think it was about two weeks since we've had it. Uh, so 50 bucks. don't know if it was international or not, but it'll go, it'll likely just go into a, a satchel with a bunch of bubble wrap corny, I reckon. Yeah. Put a bunch of bubble wrap around that and that should be fine. But that was a unique find in the video game category. Yeah. Um, this is awesome. This one here is a New South Wales rugby Canterbury, which is always good to see. Canterbury made in Australia. There's so many stains on it as well. But these vintage old school rugby jerseys, long sleeve as well, which is great to see. Uh, I don't know what year or what decade this would have been. Maybe the 90s? Yeah. Early, early 2000s? Looks old. Looks old. Um, we listed this up for $100. What day do you reckon you listed this? Wednesday? The last day I left. Thursday? Yeah. Listed on Thursday, sold on Saturday. Two-day turnaround, and we got $90. So a $90 sale price on this sort of thing. I think we may have gone a little bit underpriced. I think we could have gone maybe $150. Mm. But again, it's a good quick sale. Yeah. We didn't pay a lot for it, and we get a $90 return on that. Yeah. So keep an eye on that sort of stuff. If you see any old, I mean, New South Wales rugby, that's pretty popular. You know, but that sort of thing from, from you know, vintage years, you're always going to do very, very well. So that was great. That'll just go into a small satchel. Won't be a stress. Um, we'll have a look at this one, because we've sold a number of hats this weekend as well. We've got a corduroy Stussy hat. Um, somebody, do you, do you say Stussy or Stussy? Stussy. Stussy. Yeah. 
someone tried to, um, in the comments, tell me how to pronounce it. I can't say anything right, so don't trust me. But they, they literally said it's pronounced Stussy, not Stussy. They spelt Stussy. it. Like, in How do you tell somebody how to pronounce something in comments? Yeah, I know. Yeah, he was so adamant. He's like, Stussy. It's pronounced Stussy, not Stussy. Like, mm. he spelt it the same way. Yeah, it's anyway, hard. <laughs> anyway, that, that was frustrating. Um, anyway, that hat sold for $29. These are the other hats that have come through and sold as well for around about that $20 to $25 sale price. So that's pretty typical. Um, so three sales there, but this one went internationally in Thailand. Uh, so we got a twenty-nine dollar sale price plus, I think it was thirty-five dollars. Wow! Um, in uh, in an international shipping charge that they've happily paid. Um, so I'm not going to do anything about that. I think it'll cost maybe twenty to twenty-five dollars to send off. Yeah. Um, so we've made an extra ten bucks there. Um, I'll let that one slide, and we'll just pocket the extra coin on that. Um, so four hats, really good consistent selling category we've got a similar amount of hats like we do Funko Pops um, so I'm going to keep sourcing hats because you're buying those hats for about two or three dollars versus a Funko Pop we were buying them for like seven or eight dollars so with the same average sale price the hats because of the purchase price um, you know put more profit in your pocket so hats are good good category to focus on uh, give you a look at these really good pair of shoes these Nike Zoom Pegasus 38 uh, condition of the sole, as you can see, is pretty good too. That's one of the biggest things that I focus on with shoes. I just make sure there's no fabric tears when I'm out sourcing, and I make sure that there's tread on the sole. I've spoken about that for years on this channel, uh, but $40 worth of an average sale price, I thought was excellent for that one. Um, shoes are probably typically now about $35 to $40, and that's why we're still continuing with this sale of all of these shoes that we've got to try and sell. I'm just not seeing the shoes sell at the full sort of $50 to $60 average sale price that I was anticipating maybe a year or two ago. Um, so I'm, I'm slowly putting sales, well, sales across every category of shoe, I should say. Um, but we're getting more of a $35 to $40 actual sell. Um, so I might actually go in and manipulate after the sale uh, some reduced price points, just like the Funko Pops, to start getting a few more shoes turnover. It's still a category that I want to source. I just think we need to be conscious of the fact there's so many shoes on eBay. Um, so sometimes that means playing midfield on a pricing or maybe a lower end on the pricing front um, to get a competitive price. These are the other shoes. We sold some, some KDs, uh, Kevin Durant basketball shoes, very small size there. They sold for 35. Um, some Under Armour hovers. I do a lot of hovers. Love finding hovers when I'm out thrifting or flea markets. Soles are pretty decent on them as well. And then these as well sold for about $35 odd dollars too. Another pair of Nikes. They're a little bit older, a little bit more worn. Longer sell-through rate based on the fact they're in bad condition. Um, so condition obviously very, very important. But, you know, the Pegasus were definitely the best shoe over the weekend. But the sale has brought in four pairs of shoes, um, you know, to sell. So that's really good. And they're all small satchels, Courtney. Mm. They're not going to take too much to, to ship off. Uh, something that we don't get an, enough of, I would love more of them, is uh, multi-order sales. I don't know what the statistics are on the store around multi-purchase orders, um, but this one here, do you remember picking this up? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Last week? Yeah. Came out on Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, thrifting on Wednesday, the John Wayne DVD collection. Uh, we bought it for... 10? Yeah, I think it was 10. Uh, and that one sold for 40. Yeah. And then... That sold, I don't know what that sold for. You would have listed that up. I think it was 15. 15 bucks. Maybe, yeah. Jim Beam. How about this dude? Hey, he's got an ACDC T, a Jim Beam key ring, and he's got John John Wayne. Yeah. You, you know exactly what sort of dude he is. Yeah. You know what he's into. Um, so yeah, this ACDC T, black ice, size extra large. I think we got a $50 sale price. Mm. I think we went $49.95 on that, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. So 50 on that, 40 and then the key ring at 105, he would have used a coupon. And then we got a $99 sale price. So a $99 bundle, and that'll ship off for about $15 in a mm -hmm. box. We'll put that into a box. Yeah. So multi orders, wherever you can, a bit like the video games, wherever you can sell multiple things that only have one shipping cost, it just makes so much more profit for you. Um, so that was great. Uh, albeit, I think it was. Pretty much the only one that was a multi-order. These are technically multi-orders, but it's one listing. Yeah. Like that, we just we listed four at once. We decided that we'd sell them as a group, but this one wasn't. Obviously, this one was individual, and he's just run through the store. 
I'd love to work out a way to try and get more people to do that. Yeah. Maybe like a buy one, get one at Diff- a percentage. Discounted, yeah. Yeah. Could look at do- trying to do that. Uh, really good video game. This one as well. We've got Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, uh, complete with manual, and I believe the disc is mint. Yeah, that looks pretty minty. Yeah. There's a couple of little surface scratches, but nothing too, nothing too hectic. Yeah. 70 bucks. It's a good sale for us. Yeah, that is. 70 bucks for that game. Um, so we'll put that into an express, uh, not an express, a uh, track down below. Yeah. Uh, so that was fantastic. We've got a bunch of other DVDs, video games. I'll show you this little collection. These are all the other ones that have come through. Um, that Gran Turismo 2, that one sold for about $40. So PlayStation 1 games are, are great. And then all of these were sort of between 20 to 30, a couple of them between 10 to 10 to 20. Mm. Um, so Courtney's just going to put them all into envelopes per the price point, whether it be tracked or untracked. Um, so that kind of your bread and butter winners. And then these were some more DVDs that were bread and butter winners. Uh, X-Men, there's a four set volume there. Dr. Quinn went for $29. And that was just one season, the fourth season. And then this was a multi Blu-ray set of movies and we got 20 bucks for that so that's all right yeah uh this sold instantly fast the elder scrolls skyrim game game guides mm. wherever you find these video game guides they sell lightning lightning fast yeah they do we don't have one in our stock anymore no um any any time we've had a game guide of any game it's sold within a week mm. for good money too yeah that game guy sold for 35 um, so you get a really high average sale price. And, and then this. This one here is awesome. So this one here is Masters of the Universe. It's a 1983 toy set. Not complete. It's missing a few bits and pieces. I think that's a Skeletor action figure uh, that's in there as well. 1983. Uh, and yeah, it's I can't remember the name of it. I'll put I'll put a comp up to show you the listing, to show you what the actual name of this thing is. I think it's like I think it's like Snake Castle or something. Yeah. Because this thing here comes up. Yeah, wow. And if it was completely working, there's a thing that lights something up or gets something talking. Yeah, wow. Guess how much we got for this? 130. Well done. <laughs> Must have read the comps. <laughs> Uh, yeah, correct. I think about that. One hundred and thirty dollars. Haven't even cleaned this, but some collector will get into this and give it a really good scrub up, make it really nice. And then there's only one or two bits and pieces to make this thing complete. Um, so, a nineteen eighty three Masters of the Universe action figure toy set. Uh, we just don't have a box. When I went to Bunnings earlier in the day, uh, I could not find a box that was going to be big enough. So when we go out thrifting later this afternoon. I'm gonna try and find a box that's uh, big enough for this bad guy. And what we'll do, Courtney, is we'll probably put, we'll probably like stuff it as well. Yeah. With um, butcher's paper, in it. Yeah. Um, just to fill it in so it doesn't get crushed. Uh, and then we'll also put bubble wrap, all the way around it. Yeah. And then we'll put it into a box, and then we'll also put butcher's paper. Yeah. In fill. So when when Courtney gives it a shake before it goes to the post office, it literally won't move. Yeah. Um, it will cost a little bit to ship off. Yeah, it will. Um, shipping will cost, I'm going to guess, 25 to 30 Yeah. Which, when we listed it, it was listed for 130 because I anticipated we'd get 100 plus postage of yeah. 30 Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what that comes out to, but that's what I think it will be. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to take you through, guys, from a postage standpoint uh, from the weekend. Really nice to see some really good, high, average sale price type items coming in, which is basically reflecting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So a $250, a $360, and then a $520 Sunday. Plus, it's like 11, 12 o'clock right now, and we've already done $365 today, mm. uh, which is included in, in there as well. So $1,100 worth of sales over three and a half days. I'm pretty happy about things. We've just got two offers coming then. Oh, wow. Call of Duty Game Bundle. Twenty nine ninety five, and they're offering twenty five. Oh, yeah. All right, done. That'll go into a small satchel for eight fifty, so seventeen dollars for three video games. It's like five bucks each yet again. Yeah. They're only ten dollar video games. And there's a um, 
Rafael Nadal hat. It's on sale from 30 down to 25 and they're offering 15. No. Nah. I'm going to go back at 25 on that. It's a Rafael Nadal Nike hat. It's a good hat. 25 bucks submit counter offer. All right. I just want to have a very, very quick chat around somebody trying to take some money off me when they probably shouldn't have. They shouldn't have been getting away with this and luckily I caught on to it and I just don't want it to happen to you. So I'm just going to briefly explain it in this video today. Um, the item in, in, in question here was a PlayStation 2 game that was in mint condition. This game was in literally no scratches on it whatsoever. And I took a photo and it really depicted that it was a mint condition game. And we listed it up as like new because it was. And then the buyer sends a message three days after having it received in the mail. And he said, with photos of a scratched up game, that I had sent him a copy that was not like new. And I looked at these photos and I compared it to the photo and my awareness of the game haul that I got, which was all mint games in this haul, including the one that sold. And I knew that the photos that he was supplying was not the same photos. And he couldn't even take a shot of the front of the, of the game as well. It was only photos of the back of the game. So that obviously made me question it immediately, the fact that he couldn't prove both sides of the game. Um, but then there were so many scratches on this game and there were so many scratches on the inner circle of the game uh, that it made me really get a bit suspect on the fact that I think he was just trying to send back his old version that he previously had and he was just trying to get a free mint copy of the game. Maybe the disc that he had wasn't playing back and he wanted to get a game that did play. Uh, so he tried to put a bit of a shifty on me and say that what I'd supplied him was poor and that he wanted a full refund. So in that scenario, I just reflected back to my initial listing photos compared it to the photos that he'd sent through. And then very politely, I just said to him that I didn't believe that what his disc was, was the same as my initial listing photo. And then from there, he said that he's gonna to have to put a dispute in if I don't issue him a refund. And I said that he should go ahead and do that because I truly believe that if eBay was to look into this case, they would be able to see what I can see, that it wasn't a complete match of the same, uh, the same disc based on the photos that were supplied. Um, so I just said, look, I'm not here to stuff around. I'm not here to be a bad seller. Uh, I just know that this game was in great condition. It was like new, like we listed it up. Uh, and I told him to go ahead and put the dispute in. And I was happy to put my case forward and let eBay decide. Based on his response from that, he said that he was going to go ahead and do it. But it's been three days now uh, and he hasn't done it. And I don't think he will do it. I think what he was trying to do was to try and catch me off guard see that the game was in poor condition in the photos that he had supplied and just immediately give him a refund. And then he would have shipped the game back. It would have been dodgy. I would have opened it up in the mail and seen that it was dodgy and I would have agreed that he was correct. But checking the listing photos, going back to him, being polite about it, telling him to put the dispute in to get an answer from eBay about it has meant that he's run away from it. When I think beginner sellers are probably just going to confirm to make the buyer happy and... It's not always about just completely pleasing the buyer and agreeing with everything they say because there are some dodgy people out there that do try to do these things. So I was just really happy that I was able to, one, get onto it really quickly with a replied message and get the conversation going with him. Uh, and two, he's folded. He's run away from it. He hasn't put the dispute in. I truly think I would have won the dispute if it went ahead that way. Um, but it's just a really important lesson in there to, to know that these people out there are trying to do some dodgies. Um, I don't get too many scams come through these days because I guess I've been around for so long and there's a, a big sales history on my account and these people are looking for beginner sellers, uh, I guess ultimately to prey on. Um, but that one did come through this weekend so I thought we'd touch on it in this video today to hopefully uh, not have it happen to you guys as well. Oh, it's getting warm. 30 degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. Be getting up towards 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. It's hot, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to head out and do some thrifting while Courtney goes and does all that shipping. I do need to, just remind me, I do need to find a uh, Masters of the Universe playset box. Uh, I'm going to go to another Bunnings. The other Bunnings didn't work out, but there is a second store that I can go and check out. 
So hopefully I can find that today to not have it go late in the mail. Um, now, what do I want to say about this thrifting adventure that we're about to go on? What do you need to know? What am I thinking that I want you to be aware of? Well, okay, so firstly, what am I thinking? I'm thinking that I always want to get through a Monday with two days worth of listings done. 15 today, 15 tomorrow. Because Courtney doesn't work on Tuesdays. So it gives me a day where I don't need to technically do too much eBay work on a Tuesday. It's a day where I can look to take a half day. Uh, if this video that I'm filming now goes up in the morning and I do the shipping of what came in the night before, I could take the afternoon off on a Tuesday. And that's a really nice feeling. But it all comes down, it all does come down to how well I go at the flea market. Because it's quite tough to go out on a Monday and find 30 items in the thrift. But if I go to the flea market, I could try and find potentially 20 to 30 listings. And yesterday we got 19. We got 19 listings, very, very good listings. And the video that I made on the flea market showing that uh, is a really cool little video to check out for some high value, good sell through rate items for this time of year. But what it's meant is I'm 11 listings short on the 30 that I need. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna try and find 11 items. And I'm gonna go to three local thrift stores that I try to do every single Monday. Um, so there's, there's less pressure when I go to the flea market uh, on a Sunday. You know, finding 11 items out here in the thrift shouldn't be too difficult. And there's going to be plenty of time because Courtney works through to 6 o'clock tonight. So she should have the post done within an hour or two. And then she's got, you know, four hours to be able to list up 30 items, which is super easy. Um, you know, she can absolutely smash that. So 11 items. That's what we're going to try and tackle today. And I'm going to try and, again, like I always harp on, I'm going to focus on sell through rate. Really good fast sell. Oop. Sorry, that was a that was a burp. I apologise. Um, that's the new focus for me: is fast selling items, good strong sell through rate. So let's go and find it. There wasn't a lot in the DVD section, but I did find this one here, which is thank God you're here. It was season two and season three. The comps on eBay for four seasons was actually quite high. It's a hundred dollar DVD set. So I think these two seasons, as a bit of a mini bundle. We could probably sell for about $30 to $40 based on what I was seeing from the comps. So the fact that I was able to only pay a dollar each in store on half price day uh, meant that these were two very, very good finds. I really wish I found episode or season four because that goes for about $60. Uh, Stingers as well was the other one, but it was just a partial set, so I passed on that. I think there's going to be a lot more thrifting to come over these next few weeks and then probably going to tone things back a bit December 15, I think. Typically, over the last three years that I've been doing this, December 15 through to January 15, are a couple of pretty quiet, quiet weeks. So rather than trying to go as hard as I can through those weeks, that's a really good opportunity to kind of take it back a notch and chill out a little bit. I don't have any crazy plans for Christmas, but I think it's going to involve less work, which I'm looking forward to. We're going to have some stock for Courtney to list up and ship off. That'd be great. So we're going to continue to look at doing bulk buys. And I think that's what I'm probably going to focus on. I'll pull back from thrifting and just grab one or two bulk buys each week. And that should be able to get us through. Might even look at doing 10 listings a day uh, for those four weeks as well. So there's not as much volume going in because I don't anticipate there'll be as many sales, I guess. We're here at the next store, RSPCA. I've got two, technically one. I'm going to list that as a multi. Uh, for $35 and I'll probably get it as well considering it's 100 bucks for all four seasons so that was a good buy I, I paid a dollar each as well she gave them to me for a dollar uh, two bucks total RSPCA is next see you in there I don't do a lot of clothing but these are the sorts of brands that I like to pick up if I ever do go ahead we've got some Tommy Bahama linen pants here these are quite interesting because they're a huge size 4XL but I think these sorts of pants you could sell for about $60. So $20 just seemed a little bit too much for me to go ahead with this purchase. I didn't know if the sell through rate was gonna be super quick, uh, given the fact they're a size 4XL. Then we've got some Levi Strauss 516. So I used to pick these up every single day when I used to 
do a lot of clothing. $15 to me just seemed a little bit steep, but if I was desperate for stock, I could have probably picked up both of those and made some profit on them, but they're not categories that I typically like to sell. I saw this DVD. I've sold this one a number of times between $15 to $20. It was only a dollar in store, Hi5 Music Machine, uh, but you've always got to check your discs. And as you can see there, it wasn't even the right disc. So put that one back on the shelf and had a bit more of a look around the kids' section DVDs and there really wasn't a lot more to find. Uh, I did find this though, which was hiding in the puzzle section. It was actually a mega collector set of American Restoration. Now this show is on our Australian TV uh, ch channel 7 mate I think you can watch this show so it is it is pretty popular but there were no comps on eBay so I'm just gonna give that a go for $10 and we'll see how we go this one here as well we've got DJ Hero on the Xbox 360 it's basically just the turntable it was priced at $15 originally it was $160 as you can see there um, and I had a bit of a look on this I really want to inspect the condition and when you have a look at this it's pretty much in like new condition which made me want to go with the purchase even more. So I had a look to see what other features or, or things came along with this box and it was actually just the turntable. So this was complete. And it was, to be honest, really like new complete and it also had the original box. So I went ahead and purchased that. And then I've got this book sale running here in store which was one for one. So you get one free one. So basically half price is what I'm trying to say. And there were this big collection here of this author, Robert... Macamore, I think his name was. And I had a bit of a look on eBay and they were going for about 90 odd dollars for about 12 or 13 books in the series, not a complete set. I've actually got a complete set here. Every single book, all 17 books, and I think I can sell it for 120. I'd definitely be fascinated to get your thoughts on those three purchases. Let me know in the comments, just write each one of them out and just say whether or not you would have bought them, yes or no. I think given the time of the year that it's it's definitely worth buying. I think the book set, American Rest Restoration was a complete series set or a collector's edition set. And then the DJ Hero, somebody's gonna buy that to play over Christmas time with the family. You just know it. So I'm confident these three will sell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out there. Hopefully I can remember this, but I'm gonna put it out there to say that all three of these will sell before Christmas in six weeks time. The third and final thrift store of the run, guys. We need a couple more items here and I've found some video games. Those ones weren't comped up to be worth too much money, but these three I am gonna go ahead with. We've got Tron Evolution. This one goes for about $15, so definitely a bread and butter purchase, but it did have its manual, which always adds to the value. And then we've got Grand Theft Auto 5 as a case, which I'm gonna sell. And then we've got a loose, uh, a loose disc of Grand Theft Auto 4 episodes from Liberty City. So I should be able to sell that for 15. I might be able to sell the game case for maybe 10 bucks. Uh, I am only paying a dollar each for these video games. So a very low price, $3 purchase rate here. And this SingStar game was going between 15 and $20, which definitely surprised me. Uh, so some good results there in the video game category. Well, no complaints there. Video games for just a dollar. That was fantastic. Uh, it, it does bring us up to eight brings us up to eight listings and I wanted 11 so I'm technically three listings short but I think oh, I think we could definitely find three listings at home I'm sure we could find three my death pile isn't zero there's definitely a couple of things that we could dig out and that'll get us through to our 30 uh, in this video today as well, what I haven't touched on yet is I wanted to, while Courtney's here with us, uh, just give you guys a bit of an update on how Courtney's going from her own eBay perspective. If you guys are watching this channel a couple of months back, we did a beginner series starting from scratch and I basically mentored Courtney through the process of starting up an eBay business. And uh, that video was for six weeks and we kind of finished the video up there because we'd, we'd done our six weeks of progress felt like we'd given the premise of the idea of the video which was to show people how to get started but it got a lot of views so much so that a lot of you guys are really curious to see what Courtney's now up to what, what has been almost six seven eight months later uh, so I'll have a bit of a chat to Courtney and give you guys an update on where she's at on that front so there it is there, Courtney's gone ahead and nailed the post. We've got a good 34 listings going out. I, like I said, I couldn't actually find, oh no, we've got 33. We didn't do this one. We did not, no, we should. Actually, 
I'm going to work on another box. Yeah. Because it's too big. And um, we've got we've got this guy down here um, to do as well. I couldn't find a box for him. So he's going to be shipped off tomorrow. I'm going to find another box for this one here. So that means 33 listings. You've done a really good job. You nailed it. Yeah. Uh, Courtney's going to go and work on the, the flea market listings, plus all the listings that I've just picked up uh, there as well. But um, we've also got these that we're going to go through in this video today too. We've got three return to senders that have come in. I've got a bit of a story around that. I'll tell you about that in a second. Package one. Package two. Package three. I'll get a chair. Okay. So as a point of context, guys, um, mum and dad have moved house and I used to work out of mum and dad's place since I got this place, uh, before I got this place, I should say. And um, I didn't update the address for delivery of return to senders on eBay um, before mum and dad ran away to their new house. So there's been these three that have been sitting at the old place uh, for best part of maybe two or three months. Mm. And then the real estate agent got in touch and said, you've got three parcels here. So the way I look at it, we've got three brand new listings. And one of them, this one right here, is a fantastic listing. Tear it open and give them a look. I need to tear right there. Yeah. So this was the mad happy sweater. The mad happy sweater that we picked up in a thrift store. How long ago was it now? Months. Yeah, literally months ago. Yeah. Um, so Mad Happy is an awesome brand and uh, a viewer yeah. of the channel actually bought that. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like 150 or $175. Yeah. Super expensive brand. And this jumper is literally like new. Yeah. They're like the retail 350 I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it was about a 350 retail. So 150 175 was a pretty fair price. Um, so we're going to list that up again for, I think, 175 Yeah. Um, so that could be a part of our listings for today. Mm -hmm. Um these two, though, I don't know. This is international. International return. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell you what it is. I mean, I could read the... The scissors over there. Could read the sender details, but it's better if it's a surprise, you know? So what, they would have got all the way to wherever they live and then, like, no one's collected it? Yeah, it would have probably gone through to customs, maybe, and then it bounced back for some weird reason, or... Didn't reach the buyer because the address was incorrect, so they shot it back. There we go. What do we got? Falling skies. Falling skies. One to five. Falling skies, one to five. So that would have been a good $50 listing, that one. And it was attempted to go to Israel. Oh my God. Oh, that was really expensive too. Was it? For sure. What we'll do is we'll get back in touch with the buyer and see if they uh, want to try again and we'll basically just confirm the address. It's not a tricky address, so I don't know why it didn't get received. Yeah. Don't look. Oh, that doesn't give it away, does it? <laughs> Usually they're right in the reference, and this was your one, obviously. Huh? It's got no reference, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't put reference details on the label. Courtney it's does. It's definitely DVDs. More DVDs. Oh, guys. What do we got there? Yeah. Use this bubble wrap again. WWE? Oh, WWE. I don't even remember that. SummerSlam. I don't think I did that. I remember refunding that. Oh. SummerSlam. I think I might have even listed it as well. Where yeah, I don't even remember that. Oh, here. So this one, this one was meant to go... Oh, no, it's here. <laughs> no, that was Israel, That's wasn't it? Oh, this was meant to just... This was meant to go to Brisbane City. Like an hour up the road. What happened? Well, it's incorrect address, RTS. So, I might get back in touch. I've got back in touch with Alicia, who tried to buy that. She doesn't want it anymore. And then these two, we might send off some messages saying, hey, we've got it back. Mm. Um, and see if they want to repurchase. If they don't want to repurchase, then we'll relist. Yeah. We might just actually relist it while we send the message off, because they probably don't want it. Yeah. And we got some more bubble wrap. How good. Which we actually need. Mm. Uh, now, Courtney, I touched on the fact that we were going to have a chat around your eBay store as well with these guys because everyone's been asking questions, which you've probably seen. Yes, I have seen that. Um, so, we need to give them an update and I'll let you take it over. <laughs> <Don't>... <laughs> 
Yes, I'm not focusing on it as much at the moment um, for a few reasons, but I'm still obviously working part-time with Matt and part-time with the coffee shop, a little bit more than part-time with them as well, which I am still enjoying, but the timing of it kind of worked out that Matt was going to America and I was also having to move houses, so I was moving to a smaller place than what I was living in, and the timing of it, I was just like, Matt brought the stock off me, I offered him the stock, and it worked out perfectly. Um, and Just I was happy to step back for a bit because I wanted to put more of my focus into this eBay store and building this to become full time here. And then, um, yeah, I'm still like, I'm enjoying both. So, yeah. So moving house, I think, was the biggest thing. That was that was like the biggest that made me decide to do it because it was just too much. Like, especially like three a day and then trying to increase that. I just would have completely run out of space. Yeah. Um, and then I well. got a, I got a message from you as well just before I went to America because we were short on stock because I was trying to get two weeks worth of quantity of stock ahead of the game. Mm. And then Courtney said, well, if I'm moving place, I'm without you know room to house all this stuff to even buy more stuff. Um, yeah. Did you want to buy it off me? So I, I paid, we had a spreadsheet of all Courtney's purchases. I paid every single piece that Courtney did initially. So all of her stock on hand was bought by me. Mm. It was listed up into my store. We've already sold quite a bit too. Yeah, we sold quite a bit as well of it, which, yeah. is, which is great. And Courtney basically deleted it off her store, relisted it into my store. And I just like, I sell on Depop as well. So I was kind of doing like five things. So I'm kind of focusing on Depop a little bit more as well, like women's clothing, because I, I kind of know what to sell on there. Mm. So it's still, still doing it, like little bits and pieces, but not as a part-time thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a really good series and learned a lot, so it was good, but yeah. Yeah, you picked up a heap of knowledge, plus mm. you're also doing it 20 hours a week still. It's not like you're not doing eBay. I think the guys were just like, yeah, no, no. no update yeah. after six or so. I don't even know how long it's been since we did that series. Oh my God, it feels like... It, it was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm still doing eBay, but just my store just taking a step back. Yeah, and Depop, yeah. you're selling a couple of things. Yeah, actually quite a bit. Mm. I sold another two. Mm. Last week. Did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Like older ones, one of the first few I listed, she bought like three things. Clothing? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's sick. Mm. So that is the update, guys. Mm. Courtney's still charging away, listing as, as ferociously as ever. It's just in this store, not her store. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, guys, I don't know when we made that series. First of all, we didn't anticipate there would be that many views. No. We no, come up with really video not. ideas for series. I think it was just a coffee morning. I was like, I'm going to start an eBay store. It was just like, oh, let's film the progress. Yeah. It was, how yeah. do we, because we know that the majority of you guys watching are at that beginner level. Yeah. Um, so we're like, let's do a beginner series. It was always meant to be six weeks. And then what, what, whatever took place after that was not really forecast. It was just. Yeah. There wasn't like a set. No. Schedule. This is what's going to happen. I think it. it's because everyone saw the, the goal that we'd put in the series to quit your coffee shop job. Yeah, for sure. I think that's to show that it, it can be possible yeah. if that's what you want to do. That's but right. for me, like I very much, if I don't like want to do it, like I want to focus on something else, then I'll do that because otherwise I'll just be burnt out everywhere. And you're also trying to get to quit the coffee shop job to be full time here with this eBay. Yeah. So the mission of trying to quit the coffee shop to be a full time eBayer is still happening. Mm. Uh, it's just in these four walls. Yeah. And it was a huge help over America to get all that stock as well. That that lifted the weight off our shoulders and it gave Courtney a, a full two weeks worth of full time or 20 hour a week work um, here as well. So that's a bit of an update. Yeah. Hopefully you guys appreciate the update. Um, it is absolutely possible for anyone to start onto eBay. And if you haven't mm. seen that beginner series, it was six weeks where we did get into a pretty strong position mm. uh, with some awesome sales. So um, go and check it out if you haven't, but um, thanks for the update. So there you go, guys. Another massive Monday in the books. We've been able to tick off everything I wanted to get done today. Courtney's gone ahead and smashed the post. She's done the listings. We were able to get enough listings for her to do as well. Um, and overall, I think hopefully some really good advice in there for you guys if you're trying to grow your own eBay business. Um, I'm going to leave you with last Monday's vlog. If you missed that, it's sitting right here. Uh, very much another day in the life sort of an episode. Hopefully you enjoy it. Consider hitting the subscribe button, trying to get to 25,000 subs before Christmas. Look forward to seeing you soon.